Hello and welcome to another short video for the 12 Lead ECG I've Got the Rhythm Facebook group. In this episode we will be looking at a case study that has been previously posted to the group and using this to discuss and explore high lateral ST elevation MI. First let's remind ourselves of the heart circulation with the focus on the blood supply to the left ventricle. The picture on the left shows the right coronary artery and the left main, left anterior descending and left circumflex. And on the right, we see a lateral projection of the heart with the focus on the left main, LAD and circumflex arteries. Blood supply to the lateral wall of the left ventricle is supplied by branches of the left anterior descending and the left circumflex arteries, which we can see here. Usually, lateral STEMIs occur alongside a larger infarct, such as an anterior, and that's where we get our anterior lateral uh, STEMIs. But occasionally, in around 13% of STEMIs, uh, we can get an isolated lateral MI. And these are usually caused by uh, the arteries that come off the LAD, like the first diagonal here, or the marginal ones that come off of the left circumflex, which I've circled for you there. So how do we recognise an isolated lateral STEMI? Well, we are looking for ST elevation in the lateral leads of 1, AVL, V5 and V6. And we are also looking for reciprocal ST depression in the inferior leads of lead 3 and AVF. It is worth noting, though, that reciprocal change in the inferior leads is only seen when there is ST elevation in both leads 1 and AVL. And if we add an inferior lateral STEMI, then that depression may not be present at all. What then is a high lateral STEMI? And how does that differ from a lateral STEMI? Well, in a high lateral STEMI, we are looking for ST elevation predominantly in leads 1 and AVL. And this can be caused by occlusion of the first diagonal branch of the LAD, as we mentioned already. Sometimes, though, in between 15 to 30 percent of the population, there can be a third branch which arises between the LAD and the left circumflex. And this is known as the ramus intermedius or intermediate branch. And I'm circling it there for you on our picture on the left. So on to our case study then. Our thanks for this ECG goes to Tommy Baldwin, who was called to a male in his 40s complaining of left-sided chest ache which radiated into his left arm. The pain had lasted about an hour and had come on suddenly at rest. So what, if anything, can we see from this ECG? Well, the computer is telling us there is some myocardial ischemia and we can see that for ourselves in the inferior lead. So if we look at lead two here, certainly in lead three and lead AVF, it's much more prominent. Uh, but can we see anything else? Well, if we have a look at our ECG, there is some subtle elevation um, in leads one, very subtle there, and certainly in lead AVL. Um, but this doesn't meet STEMI criteria. And if we look at the computer, it's got lead one as uh, 11, uh, 0.11 millimeters, and AVL as 0.37 millimeters. So what should we do? Well, continuous monitoring of this patient should be a must and perhaps a discussion to see if the cath lab would accept the patient anyway might also be a good idea. In this case, though, events moved pretty quickly and within two or three minutes of this ECG being recorded, the patient surprised both Tommy and his colleagues by going into a VTVF arrest. Here we have a printout of the patient's rhythm when he arrested and we also have the post ROSC um, ECG. Fortunately, all involved did a great job for, uh, by successfully resuscitating this patient and getting him to the cath lab where he was successfully stented and given a good prognosis. Apparently, this patient had a chronically obstructed circumflex artery and also an acute total occlusion of an intermediate artery. Take home points from this case study then. Always keep your patient continuously monitored when you suspect ACS as the cause of their chest pains. If you see reciprocal ST depression in leads 3 and AVF, have a little look for that subtle elevation in the high lateral leads of 1 and AVL. And don't forget that up to 30% of the population have a ramus intermedius artery. For those of you with an interest, here are the references for the figures quoted in today's short video of 13% of STEMIs being isolated to the lateral wall and also the 30% uh, of the population that have a variation and anomaly of the coronary arteries and have that ramus uh, intermedius. I will finish then by saying thank you for watching. 
Hopefully you find these short videos both helpful and easy to understand. Goodbye for now. Hope to see you all again soon.